Good morning, folks. Decided to shake things up this morning while the sun sleeps it off. Solar wind is completely quiet. We've had no big flares whatsoever for days. Remember, the flare watch begins tomorrow. Earthquake watch does as well. Here's part of that story as you see the Perseid meteor shower in the background. Still got time to view that, folks. Here's a real-time data feed of the meteorites. But over the next three days, the moon conjoins Jupiter, Venus, and Mercury on consecutive mornings, and then two days later, it's a new moon. This is allegedly the new U.S. military airship. I say allegedly not because I doubt their ability to build it, but because the pictures are in Jinhua and there is some 7-7 seven, seven symbolism here. If I zoom in close, see them tilted upon one another? Anywho, a lava rock mass the size of Romney's bank account is off the coast of New Zealand. They actually say this is not from those two volcanoes on watch. This is another event. We got some red tide off the coast of British Columbia, thousands of dead fish washing up in Mississippi, where not far away a tornado destroyed a building and killed a dog yesterday. I'll say this again, if you live here and don't check Torcon once a day, you're crazy. By the end of the weekend, Hurricane Tracker will be relevant again as well. Someone forgot to tell Alaska the quake watch begins tomorrow, although I suppose these ultramagnetic corona holes were facing Earth at that time. A 6.1 counts as a significant quake. Luckily, there was no injury or damage, but the list, showing it as a ringer. She sent seismic L waves across the globe. Now, as I come down, you might notice that more and more plots are being taken offline. It really started in Russia, and one of my best guesses leads to a recurring topic, the pole shift. This should be all you really need. This link is below if you can't see it, but just do the math. Down here at the bottom, 1831 North Pole position. 70 years later, it had moved up to here, not very far. Well, about 70 years later, it had jumped way up here, and then it took approximately that same large jump, but in only 29 years. It's been recently measured as racing towards Russia. Let's keep the causation conversation on this comment section as crazy free as possible, please. As I said before, those two dark, highly magnetic coronal holes are facing Earth and are putting out a strong solar wind stream that could affect Earth in the coming days. The sunspots around it are numerous, but not too scary in my opinion. Yes, the flare watch begins tomorrow, but don't forget there's the near-term flare watch as well, and I see little complexity or dangerous magnetic classification. In fact, these sunspots are in decay, and if that doesn't change or we don't get some new spots emerging, chances are that the big flares will be on the far side, probably this area shown here on Stereo A facing away from Earth. We can hope, right? Either way, on the left side, that's the eastern limb near the solar equator, we see another dark area turning in to face Earth. That would be the massive south pole corona hole you can see on the other stereo, stereo B. This could be an indicator that a large quake is not far away. As for the flare and earthquake watches, I guess we can pretty much start the watch now. For many of you who do not like jumping around from orbital image to orbital image to see everything, here are the alignments and other things noted as being part of the watch in list form. You can go check these for yourself if you want or watch the last two videos. Kind of a screwy news today, I know, but there you go. Earthquake watch begins, flare watch really starts tomorrow. Be safe, everyone.